اطلب العلم اخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور اطلب العلم اخي فهو درب به نور به ترقى به تحيا عالما حرا فخور بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عباده الذين اصطفى وبعد Now our, our topic today إخواني is about Lut عليه السلام It's about Lut عليه السلام And Lut grew up in the same household as Ibrahim And he loved Ibrahim his uncle so much And he got attached to his uncle Ibrahim عليه السلام And when Ibrahim alayhi salam was casted in the fire and Ibrahim alayhi salam came out of that fire unharmed, untouched because Allah, the Lord of that fire and the Lord of this universe ordered that fire or fire be cool and peaceful on Ibrahim. And the fire obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he saw that Lut and not only Lut, the whole tribe and the whole city saw that. And Lut was the only one from among all those people who believed in Ibrahim. And Ibrahim alayhi salam, he migrated from where he was in Babylon, in Iraq. He went to Syria and then from Syria to Palestine. Who followed him? Lut. On the way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal to Lut and reveal to Ibrahim alayhi salam. And the duty of Lut alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will choose Lut as a prophet and a messenger. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send Lut on a great mission. And the mission of Lut was very tough and hard. Extremely hard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Lut to a place called Sadum. At that time was called Sadum. Another name that Allah azza wa jalla describes or mentions Sadum as Al-Mu'tafika. Sadum Mu'tafika are one place. That place is on the borders of Jordan and Palestine now, which we have these days something called the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is where Sadum, or that used to be a flat land, how people live on it, and we know why it became a sea. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Lut alayhi salam on a mission, on a job, on a task, on a message, and that message of his to call the people of Sadum back to Allah. And who are these people of Sadum? Sadum was a city, a very flourished city, where it used to be a station for many travelers. And also, it used to be a place where a lot of merchants or a lot of businessmen will come past Sadum to deal and buy and sell. And at the same time, Sadum and Mu'tafika is the most corrupt city ever existed in history at that time at that time these days you have something maybe even worse Sadum at that time was the most corrupted the most crime, a criminal city or the most worst or corrupt or evil city that existed at that time the scholars say Allah Azza wa Jal did not describe a tribe as bad as he described the tribe of Lut. He described them as fasiqin, kafirin, jahilin. He described them with the worst or the bad or the evil description of someone being described. This is the people of Lut, alayhi salam. What was their corruption? Not only they were disbelievers, not only they were disobedient, not only they turned against the call of Allah Azza wa Jal, but these people went into the corruption and the kufr of it, and the crime to the deepest end, that they start, they came up and innovated. They came up and innovated and produced crimes and sins and evilness that no one in the past ever did. And what was that? One of the things that the whole entire world did never or ever experience before Sadum was the homosexuality. When Lut told his people, you do the fahisha, the crime, 
You commit the sin, you commit the evil doings. Such an action that no one in history before you ever did. And what was that? You have desires, all men. You have desires for other men, the same gender. And you live your woman. You have desires, you're attracted to men as men. And you leave your woman. And of course, there's nothing that mentions about a woman with a woman. But the people of Lut had this common thing of men with men. They had this common thing of men having sexual contact or whatever with other men. And not only that, they used to be proud of it. They used to be proud of it. It's not like they used to keep it hidden. They used to speak it out. And they used to commit the corruption out in the open. They never used to disclose it and cover up on themselves. Or people doubt or a small gang of people do it. But the entire tribe, the entire city was involved in such corruption that it became a natural thing. How a man is married to a woman, man with man is normal. At that time. The other evil doing they used to do is they used to be harborers. People used to go past Sodom or around Sodom and they used to go out and fetch or find and look and search for any travelers that's going around there and they used to steal their property. And not only that, they'll even sometimes kill them. That's an evil doing. <laughs> The people of Lut have belied all the messengers. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُمْ أَخُوهُمْ لُوْتٌ أَلَا تَتَّقُونَ إِنِّي لَكُمْ رَسُولٌ أَمِينٌ فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُونَ When Lut alayhi salam told them, Don't you fear Allah? I am a messenger who is trustworthy. I have come to you. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَجْرِ إِنْ أَجْرِيَ إِلَّا عَلَى رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ I am not asking you a single penny. Look again. He says, I am not asking one dollar from you, meaning nothing. No currency, no money, no gold, no silver, nothing material. I don't want anything. So they began to accuse him. This man is come to our town here and he's starting to convey a message and telling us to stop doing what we're doing because he wants to make gain something out of it. And Allah says, no, he told his people, I don't want anything from you. Nothing at all. My recompense is with my Rabb. And then he directly mentioned to them what they were doing and how wrong it was. <laughs> وَتَذَرُونَ مَا خَلَقَ لَكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ مِنْ أَزْوَاجِكُمْ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ عَادُونَ How can you engage yourselves with the same sex? How can you engage in acts of immorality with the same sex? And how can you prefer them over the females? Indeed, you are a people who have transgressed the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Lut alayhi salam said to them directly, How can you engage in homosexuality? And not only that, but in full view of everybody. Astaghfirullah. You are shamelessly engaging in it whilst people are watching. People are looking at you. You have no shame. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Lut alayhi salam looked at his people and he said, O oh my people, I disassociate myself completely from whatever you are doing. I am not a part of you and I will never engage in this, nor will I ever condone it. And I want to make it clear that I oppose you very strongly. And I'm warning you of a severe punishment to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah says, وَمَا كَانَ جَوَابَ قَوْمِهِ إِلَّا أَن قَالُوا أَخْرِجُوهُمْ مِنْ قَرْيَتِكُمْ إِنَّهُمْ أُنَاسٌ يَتَطَهَّرُونَ They told the rest of them, 
they spoke amongst each other and they said we need to kick Lut out of our community because he he thinks he's very pure and clean he thinks he is very pure and clean we need to kick him out of the community so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this and Allah says in another verse فَمَا كَانَ جَوَابَ قَوْمِي إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا أَخْرِجُوا آلَ لُوطٍ مِّنْ قَرْيَتِكُمْ Their response was that we need to now kick Lut and his family out of this community because they are people who claim to be very clean and they look at us as though we are very dirty. So then they warned him. لَإِنْ لَمْ تَنْتَهِ يَا لُوطُ لَتَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُخْرَجِينَ O Lut, if you don't stop saying what you are saying, we will kick you out. Lut called them to Allah and preached to them and reminded them and fear Allah and stop what you do. This is an evil action. Fear Allah and stop what you're doing. And the people of Lut will just become more aggressive on Lut. That at the end, they forbid Lord from talking to anyone. Not only them, but anyone from outside, you're not allowed to speak to them. You're a pain in the head, as they say. Leave us alone. What's this? You want us to stop what we want to do? We're having fun. Who are you to come and stop us? And Lord, alayhi salam, will insist to call him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Lord, if he doesn't stop saying what he's saying, we're going to kick you out of the city. Stop saying, stop preaching. And don't speak to anyone. We're sick and tired from listening to you. We're happy on what we do. I'm happy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Lut alayhi salam warned them of a punishment. He said, look, Allah is going to come to you with a punishment. I am telling you to do something that is better for you. And why is it that you want to engage in this? And you have been blinded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there was another response they gave when he warned them of a punishment. Allah says, فَمَا كَانَ جَوَابَ قَوْمِهِ إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا اُتِنَا بِعَذَابِ اللَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتَ مِنَ الصَّادِقِينَ The response of that community was none other than, O Lut, bring the punishment of Allah to us now if you are truthful. Now they are asking for trouble. It looks like there's no chance. There is no chance. And no one, no one in the whole tribe of Sadum became a Muslim. There was only one household that was a Muslim. And that's Lut alayhi salam. And not the whole house of Lut. It was Lut and his daughters, not his wife. And we'll hear about his wife. When they said that, Lut alayhi salam made the dua. He made a dua. قَالَ رَبِّنْ صُرْنِي عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْمُفْسِدِينَ He said, Oh my Rabb, help me against these people. And he says, رَبِّ نَجِّنِي وَأَهْلِي مِمَّا يَعْمَلُونَ Oh Allah, safeguard myself and my family from what they are doing. Now, we need to stop for a moment and look at what happened. Ibrahim alayhi salam was living at the time. And Ishaq alayhi salam had not yet been born. Isaac, may peace be upon him, was not yet born. When Lut made this dua, Isaac, may peace be upon him, was not yet born. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we sent three angels to the Prophet Abraham. And when they came to Abraham, he did not recognize them as angels initially. And you know, he brought in the calf and mashallah, it was a roasted calf that he brought in. And subhanallah, nice fat calf. When they didn't eat, he was frightened. To a certain extent, meaning he wanted to know the reality of who they were. And when he asked them, who are you? In fact, they then told him, we are messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have been sent to the people of Lut. And we have been sent to inform you that your wife has conceived. And inshallah, she will be delivering a child known as Ishaq. So Ibrahim alayhi salam looked at them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا ذَهَبَ عَنْ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الرَّوْعُ وَجَاءَتْهُ الْبُشْرَى يُجَادِلُنَا فِي قَوْمِ لُوطُ When Ibrahim alayhi salam's fear subsided and we gave him the good news, he started debating with us about Lut's people, 
meaning trying to buy a little bit of time for them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we told him, oh Ibrahim, stay out of that. We have already declared that the punishment is going to go on them. Ibrahim alayhi salam was worried. He says, Inna fiha luta. But Lut is from amongst them, meaning he is living in that community. They said, Nahnu a'lamu biman fiha. We know exactly who is there. We know better than you who is in that community. We will save him, don't worry. And we will save those who deserve to be saved. In the meantime, they proceeded and they now walked towards Sodom. And how did they come? They entered the city of Sodom in the figures of the most beautiful, handsome looking young men. Where? Sodom. Out of all places, Sodom. Looking as what? Beautiful, young, handsome young men. Allahu Akbar. They came in. Who saw them from far? The daughter of Lot. She was a believer. So when she saw them from far, she ran to her father. Saying these people, I guess, travelers from outside the city. It's bad for them to come, especially with... They are very attractive to those people. They are very attractive to these men of uh, Sodom. So she ran to Lut. Lut alayhi salam came out and he welcomed him. And Lut, his intention was to convince him to go back. At the same time, he was embarrassed to tell him to go back when he asked him, Who are you? They said, We're a guest. And a Muslim should never reject a guest. So Lord was embarrassed to reject him. And bringing him to his house, Lord was so cautious from anyone seeing these people, from anyone seeing these three young men. And Lord, during the way, he hints to him. He wants them to understand maybe they'll be convinced from their aunt and they'll walk away from the city. He was saying, by Allah, I have never ever seen more corrupt people than this city. And he'll constantly repeat it trying to send a message to them, maybe they'll think and say, okay, it's not the right time for us to be here. Or it's not the right place for us to be here. And they'll walk away. It's not nice from him to say to them, who they came as guests to him, to say, go back. And Lut alayhi salam will try and take him to his house and not let anyone see them. When they entered the house of Lut, who saw those three young handsome men? His wife. And his wife was a non-believer. When she saw those three young men in the house of Lord, she went out to the men outside the house of Lord and she called them and said, Lord has three attractive young men in his house. She is the one that called everyone to come. So now Allah says, وَجَاءَ أَهْلُ الْمَدِينَةِ يَسْتَبْشِرُونَ the people of the community, the men, started coming and they were giving each other good news. Hey, there's three guys there. Hey, there's three guys there. They continued. Hey, there's three guys there. Let's go. And they all started going in that direction. Astaghfirullah. They knocked on his door. They said, hey, open the door. He said, what do you mean? I've got guests here. <laughs> Don't embarrass me with my guests here. Is there not a single one of you who is sensible? Even one from amongst you sensible? Who can let go of these guests of mine and you want to embarrass me? I've got guests here. You have no respect for these guests. And they said to him, Oh Lut, didn't we tell you that you are not allowed to have host anybody? No one. Imagine. They had set a law for themselves that this man is not allowed to host anyone. Because if he hosts them, we're going to have a problem with him. Anyone else host them, they could pounce on that person at night. So Lut alayhi salatu wasalam, he continued trying to tell them different ways. In the meantime, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes something greater. A whole lot of them came rushing to him. Almost the whole community. Allah says the qawm came. The whole nation came. And they came rushing to him. 
and they, when they heard, they all wanted a share of it. Astaghfirullah. wa quwwata illa billah. And they came to the door and they, want, they started banging on the door. They wanted to break it now. Allahu Akbar. And they were about to break the door. Now Lut alayhi salam is worried and he is scared. Scared for what? He's worried that these guests here, they are my guests. And these people are not even letting go of these guests. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He looked at them and he said, at that stage he said, Look, oh my people, my daughters, you can marry them if you want. When he said my daughters, he is meaning the daughters of the ummah, the females that are there. They were as good as his own daughters. So he says, why don't you engage in this act with the daughters, with the girls? You can marry them if you wish. What are you doing here? Why do you want to do this? Do you know what they said to him? Lut, you know we're not interested in the girls. You know exactly what we want. And Allah says this in the Quran. And Allah says, this is how they uttered. You know exactly what we want. Now he was almost helpless and he uttered the following statement. He said, I wish and I hope that at this point I had males to help me because he's only got two daughters. I had males to help me or some powerful support that could protect us here. These three men spoke up. Ya Lutu, inna rusulu rabbika lan yasilu ilayka. O Lut, we are angels. They will never ever be able to harm you. Not in the least. Lan yasilu ilayk. Not at all. Jibreel alayhi salam will go out to them and with one hit of him he'll make them all blind. He made them all go blind. And they couldn't see anything anymore. Was that a good lesson for them? No. They said, what's this magic that just hit us? What's this sihr that just hit us? Where did this come from? Oh Lord, you are the one that's behind this. You will see what we'll do to you tomorrow. And they went, touching the walls, going back to their houses, preparing and planning to come back the next day and to destroy Lut alayhi salam. فَأَسْرِ بِأَهْلِكَ بِقِطْعٍ مِّنَ اللَّيْلِ وَلَا يَلْتَفِتْ مِنْكُمْ أَحَدٌ إِلَّا مْرَأَتَكْ Go you now by night. Leave this community and go as far as you can and do not turn back at all don't even turn back to look at them besides your wife besides your wife meaning your wife might join you but she will turn back and receive the punishment or your wife will not join you one of the two things whatever it was Allah knows best so Lut alayhi salam immediately left because he, they, he was told these people's final time is at daybreak. Morning, early morning. Isn't that so near, O Lut? It's so near. You just go away. Go as fast as you can and as far as you can. Just go, you and your family. So he took his daughters and he went. Now what happened? Allahu Akbar. These were the people who were punished in the biggest way they had three different punishments three different punishments for one nation Allah says as that battle ensued early morning they had the awful cry and it was so loud it started shaking them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he instructed the angel Jibreel who was one of them to get back into his original form. Jibreel alayhi salam from the edge of his wing will grab the whole city from the edge of his wing. 
will grab the whole city, lift it up all the way to the heavens, that the angels heard the people of Sodom in the heavens screaming and crying, and the people of Sodom heard the tasbih of the angels. And he twisted the whole land and collapsed to all on the ground. فَجَعَلْنَا عَالِيَهَا سَافِلَهَا We turned them totally upside down, completely. We made the top, the bottom. And the bottom, the top. That's what Allah says we did. The tip of the wing of our angel, Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam. وَأَمْطَرْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ حِجَارَةً مِّن سِجِّيلٍ Allah says, and then we sent those stones which were baked. It's it like rock-like stones, meaning slightly larger than a general stone, a little bit smaller than what we would term a rock. Each one had the name of an individual engraved on it. They were already named. Each one had something engraved on it from Allah. This one for that man. This one for that man. It came in an arranged manner. So the stones began to come from the sky. When one hit one, the other was looking and suddenly another started following this one. And it hit him and the third was looking. So the third one hit the third and the fourth and the fifth until in a very, very short time, the entire community was totally destroyed. There was also one of these for the wife of Lut alayhi salatu wasalam. So Allah says, firstly the awful cry, then we turn them upside down and then we had the stones rain from the top for every single one of them. Allahu Akbar. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ أَنذَرَهُمْ بَطُشَتَنَا فَتَمَارَوْ بِالنُّذُرُ Lut alayhi salam warned them a lot. But they didn't believe him. And they tested his guts in the sense that they continued. And they continued harming him. And they continued engaging. They didn't want. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look, look at these people. Look at how they've been punished. And do you know what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the fact that they are still there. Allah says, these people of Lut alayhi salam, we have kept them, we have kept their signs there for all of you to see who come after them. So today you go to the Dead Sea, Allah says, we've kept it as that. You will see what happened to the people of Lut. Go there and have a peep. Lut alayhi salam went, where did he go? He went back to Ibrahim alayhi salam in order to tell him. He went to tell Ibrahim alayhi salam what happened and he was amazed that Ibrahim alayhi salam already knew what had happened. Why? Because Ibrahim alayhi salam said, when those angels were coming, they passed by me first. They told me, then they went to you. And it is reported that up to the death of Lut alayhi salam, he continued reminding people and he continued teaching them goodness until we meet again. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.